What's going on everybody? This is George coming at you with another video. I'm here in the wonderful city of San Antonio, Texas doing some traveling for work and thought I would throw up my camera and shoot a video. For those of you that are new to my channel, I talk about IT, career, and personal finance. So if you're interested in that kind of content, feel free to subscribe, like, and comment, and share this video to people you think might find use of it. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about my experiences with certification exams in the IT industry. Now, I definitely can't guarantee that all of these tips are gonna help you pass on the first attempt. That's definitely not something that you can guarantee to anybody. And with the world filled of uh, boot camps and stuff that promise that you'll pass on the first attempt, this video is not here for that. I'm here to deliver real applicable tips that you can use in your everyday studies to ensure higher odds of you passing on your first attempt. And I think that this is an important topic to discuss because of the fact that cert certifications in the IT industry can change people's lives quite dramatically. Within a short couple of months, you can gain a lot of knowledge, gain a valuable, highly paid skill, and learn to do something useful and provide for your family using those skills. My first tip is to create a very detailed study plan based on the blueprint for the test. Now let's say you're planning to take your CCNA for routing and switching. Actually, this is 2020 now, so I'm just gonna say your CCNA because now there's just one CCNA test. You're planning to take it. The, probably one of the first things that you should do, you should go out there and find the blueprint for that exam, download it, print it out, and grab all the topics. Once you got the topics, you should go ahead and break that down into subcategories. Once you do that, you wanna take note on what are the things that are weighted more heavily. So for instance, I know when I used to take my CCMP exams, the BGP section was quite heavy and the OSPF section. So for me, I knew, I knew that I had to place a lot of my priority on those two sections and I wanted to understand those technologies to the best of my ability. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend a whole lot of time on subjects that aren't gonna cover a very large portion of the exam. Now you might be saying that you've taken certification exams where there are certain topics that weren't even on the blueprint and I've certainly experienced that myself. And a lot of that kind of attributes to why most people don't pass on the first attempt and it all kind of goes back to kind of the look of the draw in terms of what type of exam questions that you get. However, if you run into a topic that for whatever reason is not on that blueprint, uh, on the first exam and you don't pass, definitely take note of that. And when you go back home and study, make sure that you verse yourself pretty well on that topic because chances are that you probably will run into that topic again. So you definitely want to plan your detailed schedule on a weekly basis. So you want to know what days you're going to be studying and what days you're actually going to take a break. So for me, when I was studying for my CCIE exam, I decided to study six days a week. Uh, when studying for the written portion of the exam at least. So what I did is when I came out of work, uh, I got out at about five o'clock, um, I pretty much finished eating food in, like around 6.30, and I pretty much shut myself in my room uh, from anywhere from 6.30 all the way to midnight, Monday through Friday. And every week, depending on where I landed the previous week, I would make sure that I updated that on my calendar, and I knew what topics and what sections I was gonna cover the next week. Now, I'll admit, I didn't always hit those marks. However, if I was backtracked, I could always go back and take a look and make adjustments. But the point is to actually have a plan and not only have that plan, but try to stick to it as best as possible. You definitely don't wanna rush through it if you don't understand a topic, but if you feel like you understand the topic well enough, you can then go ahead and move on. Now, you also want to base that detailed schedule upon the type of study material that you attain. And for this, I would recommend pretty much a plethora of books, especially the Cisco certification books, the official cert guides. Uh, I would also recommend that you look at multiple training vendors. Uh, there's CBT Nuggets, there's INE, there's Chris Bryant on Udemy. I know there's a lot of other Udemy courses that are, that are pretty popular as well. Uh, those are the ones that I'm familiar with. I would take advantage of as much as you can in terms of um, the number of vendors and the number of teachers that you have to learn from. 
you're gonna find that certain teachers will resonate better with you and with your personality and your way of learning. You also want to make sure that you get your hands on some type of lab workbook. I know there's a lot of uh, really good ones on Amazon. Um, I believe it's like 101 labs uh, that I use for my CCNP uh, switch and route exam. I don't know if those books are still out there, but if I will, if I do find them, I'll link them in the description. Uh, definitely find yourself good workbooks um, to base your studies off of. You also want to try to find some online resources that you can use. Uh, these could be either RFC documents or blog posts or maybe even the Cisco community's webpage. Lastly, in regards to doing scheduling, I would highly recommend that if you live with your spouse or partner, uh, if you live with family, that they understand that when you make this schedule, this is essentially a commitment to yourself. So you want to make sure that they understand that during this time, it's as if you're pretty much not there or you're at work somewhere. I know this is a really hard pill for a lot of people to swallow, but this is definitely one of the biggest, I think, indicators of whether or not you're actually going to pass these exams, is whether or not you're actually able to have this discussion with family members, uh, with people that you love, and understand um, that they need to know how much it means to you. If they do, they'll definitely give you the time set aside, and within the next couple of months, uh, you'll have that exam passed and you'll be able to spend a lot more time with them when the time comes. Now, I think we're applicable, especially if you don't have experience with the actual hardware that you're working on. I would highly recommend that you go out and buy a physical lab, especially if you're just starting off. So if you're working on Microsoft certs or server certifications, you may want to go out there buy yourself a server on eBay. If you're working on Cisco certifications, you might want to buy some routers, some switches, some ASAs, just so that you can get exposure to what that equipment actually looks like, how it actually integrates and boots up from an initial configuration perspective. Now, at some point, you might feel pretty comfortable with the equipment and you don't necessarily need it. So you can go on and move on to use uh, things like GNS3 or EvenG or other type of virtualization softwares so that you can run your larger scale labs. You definitely want to find a flow that works well for you. And what I mean by that is in terms of your content and your study material, know exactly how you want to consume that and in the order that you want to consume. So for me, I always learn best when I visually learn it. So for me, when I was going through my CCNA, for example, I would like to watch the videos from two separate vendors. Let's just say the topic was around EIGRP. I would like to watch that entire series of EIGRP from both vendors, then go to my official search book and start reading, find any other online material. If I had any questions, I would probably ask on the Cisco communities. And then lastly, I would go through and lab about the different topics. Now the labs, I might do uh, video per video, depending on whether there were subcategories within EIGRP, which there definitely are. Uh, just so that I can keep up with the pace and not, you know, learn one subject at the very beginning and then, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, tens or maybe even hundred, hundred pages later, uh, forget all about that first subject. So I would recommend for labs to do them as often as possible and in, uh, in, I guess, short intervals. This tip is definitely going to sound counterintuitive, but I would highly recommend for you guys to also remember to take breaks. We're all human and we need to like disconnect for a little while. So there are uh, several types of ways to do this. Uh, for one, if you're studying for a long period of time, I would recommend that every hour or so uh, that you get up and stretch for about five minutes or so for every hour. Also, I would highly recommend that you set up a number of hours that you want to study. So if you have a goal for 20 hours, and if you hit that 20 hours within five days, or if you do every other day, as long as you're hitting that goal, you shouldn't feel pressured to move much further along. So let's just say you hit your, your 20 hours of study uh, by Friday, and you want to take Saturday and Sunday off and you really feel like you need the time, I would definitely recommend that you take that time uh, to you know plant back down on the ground, reconnect with your family, and do the things that you need to do to take care of yourself. 
Remember that burnout is a real thing and you wanna make sure that you don't burn yourself out because that will completely stop all your progress. Now this one is probably the most important but also the hardest one to really tune well. You're gonna find there's a lot of very large study groups out there, um, but oftentimes the larger the group is, the more kind of convoluted it becomes and oftentimes you'll find people dropping out of those study groups. What I really like to do is to create small study groups, no more than maybe five people who are at around the same place where you are and you start and you create essentially a cadence and a schedule with them. So not only are you just in a group and asking people questions on the Slack board or, or a Discord, but you're actually meeting up either in person or you're meeting up over a WebEx or a Zoom call so that you guys can actually hold some kind of accountability with each other. Again, this is actually really difficult to do to find those people, but once you find them, definitely stick with them. Uh, I found a really great group when I was working through my CCIE. Uh, it was wonderful and we all became really good friends to this day. It was a group of about five or six of us that started in the group and um, I was able to work alongside especially uh, one of those individuals who was able to help me and I was able to help him do things like create labs for troubleshooting um, and just spread different types of ideas to each other uh, or ask different questions or maybe fill in the blanks where the other individual just didn't understand something well enough. What we found is that that really helped us prepare for some of these more difficult exams. One of the things that I highly would recommend is to teach other people what you learned. And with the study group, you'll be able to do that. Just imagine, for instance, you study for about a week and you have this weekly study session with your, your group of maybe three people. And you take turns explaining different topics to each other. And what you'll find is that as you are pressured to teach people how to do something or how to understand a certain topic, you will actually begin learning it at a much deeper level. I truly hope that you found this video useful and found something that you can apply to your everyday studies. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.